So this is a typical example of, uh, of harming individuals' reputation, generate distress, and as you see, it took a lot of effort. So now, more than two centuries later, in 2021, we all heard about the GameStop cases. So you introduced uh, rightly um, Ernst about Zen Posar, who offers a unique online threat analysis and monitoring solution. And we use artificial intelligence, neural networks, machine learning um, to detect, investigate, and also monitor online narratives. So one of the early slides. So in, in March this year on an interview, Marianne Leslie, so one of your colleagues, Ernst, uh, head of financial information business unit at six, uh, she explained data that are collected and filtered and analyzed. They serve as an ally to counter fake news. And information, if they're well published, parsed, authenticated, and made cleaner, can really serve to promote online integrity. And I was very happy also this morning to see my former team member and colleague, Dr. Madan Sate from EY, who kicked off today's track. And Madan reflected very well that one of the main key concerns for financial institutions is data quality. And how can we scheme through data quality that are especially external from the financial institutions that are being published online? So you see the problem nowadays. In 2020 alone, we have seen how disinformation campaigns and, and harmful narratives, especially related to COVID-19, but also to businesses, they harm. There was a deliberate use of untruths or half-truths to confuse, to incite, to inflame, to disrupt and cause economic harm, reputational damages, physical damages, and even loss of life. Now we can make an impact together to protect us in addition to protect our next generations. The young generations, and also often including us adults, we, we take it for granted, information that are published on social media, and they are being retweeted uh, very quickly. And I often relate to my daughter to explore her visions, the visions of their generation with the hype of social media, with the hype of electronic data. So today's investors and also traders are getting younger and younger, especially with, the, with regards to the crypto markets. So I've created this list of social media with the help of my daughter, a Gen Z, thanks to her. And I discovered many, many platforms which I didn't know about. And I added the ones that are popular in the business, in the corporate, and in the financial sector. And as you can see, also the explosive growth of audio-based social networks, such as Clubhouse, they present new challenges for the media landscape. As exposed by the previous, uh, pre previous presenter talking about sound, sound analysis, this is becoming extremely important, not only internally within financial institutions, that, that they've explained previously, but also external, especially on podcast. This is also a new way to spread information and misinformation. And on the right side, you see how often users on the information space, they relay, they retweet, they recommend, they comment, they vote for information, for information which they not have not seen uh, anything about or even performed an in-depth analysis. So what's even better, or sometimes worse, that most of the times, these are results of bots which artificially promote narratives for good or for bad. And what are we confronted with? You know, human being is easy to fool with. We are confronted with cognitive bias. We want to trust what we hear and what we read. This is the power of social media nowadays. Seeing is believing and also believing is seeing. And this is actually the, uh, the, the, the uh, challenges that we are exposed to nowadays with the information space. So here are some examples of disinformation campaigns that cause extensive financial impact. The most recent one, as you all are aware, GameStop, the GameStop friendliness. So far, just a bunch of small investors, real estate investors on Reddit, they took on Wall Street. And you've seen, actually, it has impacted roughly a loss of close to $20 billion, especially for hedge funds. And GameStop and similar MEM stock cases were mostly focused on small cap companies. I'm not going to go into the much details because I'm pretty sure that you're all aware of. But one important thing is that the power of social media, the power of Reddit, uh, that's a 2 million member, 
Um, they used, they realized that enough of them worked together, they could inflate GameStop stock prices by buying shares en masse. So according to the SEC, the fact of actually spreading and using the uh, critical mass is legally not punishable, not sanctionable, but they're still currently investigating because that's not called, that's not what is called like a fraud, a fraud cases. So this process is called a short squeeze. Is a short squeeze uh, sanctionable or not? That's still to be decided. So before GameStop, you may recall that in 2015, Twitter shares jumped 8% after a fake online story about a 31 billion takeover. And so what we see is that critical mass of independent investors, they can disrupt the entire ecosystem. So now AI solution, why? AI solution dedicated to advancing online integrity by embedding intelligence can help in the detection of new harmful narratives as, as Ernst has exposed at the beginning or new disinformation campaigns linked with historically to previous one based not only on digital evidence, but also on artifacts of actors and their modus operandi. So similar to cybersecurity, which sometimes cybersecurity attacks are even um, harder to prepare and harder to launch, but nowadays with the power of cloud, with the power of social media, it has become very easy to spread this information and cause harm. However, on social media, sometimes, or rather quite often, we all know that freedom of expression is claimed as a mean to defend the purpose of malinformation and misinformation. Those are the screenshots of examples how variation of stock prices or cryptocurrencies is triggered by social media posts, either by artificially promoted narrative, powered by bots, or simply users. So to relate about a crypto being prime target for social media manipulation, you may remember that back in 2017, if I remember right, fake news story reported that Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum, had died in a car accident. So what happened? The consequences was big. The company's value dropped by $4 billion. So at the same time, crypto market has strong bullish trend and most of those manipulations we've seen they are supported and fueled up on the growth. So among frenzy cryptos, one triggered my attention was fake token. I guess most of the um, frenzy uh, crypto traders are familiar with fake token. So on one hand, I reviewed the purpose of fake token. And on the other hand, I tried to find out what's real behind it. So I did it manually. I reviewed manually and analyzed social media accounts. But uh, I just want to make sure the disclaimer is clear. I did not provide, and Zenposa does not provide any personal investment advice, and we're not qualified as a license advisor. So now I will pass on to my colleague, Paul Dutko, Zenposa, head of product data science, to explain more in depth the AI technology aspect. Paul? Uh, yes. Um, okay. So uh, let's cut to the chase. Uh, uh, as an input, we have different uh, sources of information uh, from social media, uh, anonymous image boards like uh, forums of traders, etc., etc. This is input contains different forms of content uh, like text, links uh, to the text articles, uh, media which includes video or image. Uh, as an output, uh, our tools come up with a focus uh, of probably potential pumps via social media or and the probability of uh, significant price changes because uh, for example GameStop they were pumping it for three or four months and the first real price change happened on the month three if, if I recall correctly so what models do we use uh, in a uh, post level well analyzing each post uh, we attributed uh, uh, two different categories. Uh, if the post was likely made by bot or was likely made by, by an experienced investor or like an, a former investor which follows them out, etc. So uh, to come up with such classifications, we use fine-tuned NLP models. There are plenty of them of uh, in, in face, etc. But uh, we specifically use, uh, because we have multi-language data, we use fine-tuned XLM Roberta and uh, Google MT5. Uh, 
so uh, also we uh, uh, in social media even in the moderated ones like twitter there are lots of crypto currency related posts which uh, uh, contain uh, harmful links like so we use some apis of services like virus total or others to check if the link is not harmful so when the also, we uh, analyze the accounts themselves. So we look at the profile pictures, we look at the frequency of posting, like up to 100 features. Then we feed those features to more traditional uh, machine learning models like uh, gradient boost. We, uh, uh, we use, for example, cut boost or SVM. So this is the account level. At the end of the day, we classify accounts, we classify posts, and we also do some human check uh, because we have a, a different users which are traders enthusiasts and they do uh, the check if we attributed the accounts correctly so uh, after we do the specifications we come up with the uh, time series uh, which show the, the time series of uh, uh, artificial traffic the time series of uh, bullish uh, traffic i mean the posts the likes, uh, the uh, retweets. So when we have this big set of time series and the time series of uh, price, we uh, try to focus what will be uh, the future pump and what will be the future price. However, um, situations like GameStop and IMC are actually rather rare compared to normal market performance. So how to come up this obstacle? We use uh, GANs. Uh, Generative adversarial networks, which and with the help of them, we come up with a synthetic data which models how the uh, price and the volume would trade in the situations uh, when there is a big pump. So then we add up these different synthetic and real world data and try to focus. For time series focus, we again use different uh, models because we are like trying. Uh, we use like uh, uh, you like end bits. We use like more traditional, like Facebook profit. So, and uh, our goal is to come up uh, to spot the pumping and to uh, focus the potential price change. So, uh, the next slide uh, uh, is the technical. Uh, can you switch? Yeah, is the technical infrastructure we use? Uh, basically, we use different. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they, they have a diverse model zoom. We use different databases, uh, like for uh, graph, we use M4G, like for uh, storing like images, uh, sorry, vectors, which uh, form the images, we use like MILUS, and we do like uh, density-based clustering there. For, uh, uh, for post themselves, we use MongoDB because we have uh, not unified data from different sources. So basically, uh, and uh, it's a very diverse uh, model zoo. Uh, uh, and for time series data, we use uh, InfluxDB because it's suitable for using like uh, time series data and good for demonstrations. I'm done. Thank you very much, Pavel, for, uh, for your explanations. So now with the time left available, I'm going to switch into the, uh, the, the product itself uh, just to give you some insights. Uh, usually, similar to the previous speaker, it, it takes about an hour to go through all the different features. But now with the uh, time available, I'm just going to show you a few, um, a few uh, aspects of it. So this one. Okay, so the, the first one is called uh, Spot the Pump, and it addresses not only coins, the crypto coins, but also stocks. And we have, we have this a possibility to visualize the impact or the correlation between authentic and inauthentic uh, narratives and the price evolution. So those are like real facts. Uh, according to data that we've uh, analyzed, we've analyzed on, on social media. What is important to know is that we are not trying to predict. However, we are trying to detect and anticipate like harmful narratives, which may trigger an increase of, uh, of the share prices. So that is valid not only for cryptocurrency, but also for stocks. And we, we, get, we uh, did uh, some analysis on GameStop, on AMC, and they reached the similar 
uh, kind of aspect. We, we are able to analyze the anomalies and according to uh, the algorithm and the, all the different training models that we have within our system, we are able to define what, are, what is authentic and what is inauthentic. And that really gives also uh, additional insight, especially for traders, but also for investors and also for hedge funds to really try to focus and understand. And imagine if you have to do that manually to go through all the different kinds of detail, all the different uh, types of, of posts, it will take ages. And using artificial intelligence to, to fight market manipulation, uh, financial market manipulation and crypto market manipulation is really helpful. So the, the second one I wanna show you is uh, the, the, the um, um, it relates to uh, the uh, cryptocurrency market. And here you have uh, what we call a time series analysis. Um, if I remove slowly, yep. Yes, so a time series analysis. Uh, th this uh, platform, uh, this a dashboard, contains all the different information about who are the suspect, who are the accounts of concern, what are the different hashtags that are being used, uh, uh, what are different media that have been uh, analyzed. Uh, we are able then to analyze the graphical aspect and also the different ringleaders, similar to what uh, are exposed in terms of a link diagram. We are able to detect whether an account is a bot, uh, a green one is an influencer, what are the ones that are really uh, spreading information and what's their connection or what's their interaction with others? The, the third one, I'm going to share you the third one. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo, sorry. Oh. Yes, so the, the third one relates to the time series one. So the time, se the time series one, Oops. So the, the time series one really show the, the variation of, of, uh, of the stock prices according in, in the time uh, aspect. So sorry, my screen got frozen a little bit. I hope it will come very quickly. Um, so it really displays from a timing perspective what has been the evolution, so it's still in the cloud generating, uh, sorry about that. Oh, here. Okay, about the different posts. So we are able using our um, um, artificial intelligence platform to identify whether the posts have been originated from a BTC maximalist, an experienced investor, a market analyst, uh, someone fear out the, of missing out, bearish, bullish trends, etc. And what is important on that is that we see the volume, and that's typical. Um, this is typical diagram that we can see on, uh, on Bloomberg on, uh, on the stock exchanges. We are able to see from a timing perspective, so to go back into time, to scroll, and really to analyze. And this gives additional added value for people who wants to create investment, not only from a compliance perspective, but also to, uh, to, uh, for, for investors so that they can anticipate. As you probably all know, is that if we are have one hour in advance or one minute in advance than other competitors, we can earn a lot of money. So with the help of AI, that is really able to anticipate financial market, potential financial market manipulation and also crypto market manipulation. So now just to conclude, I'm gonna switch back here. So just to conclude on the, the thought, uh, what is needed nowadays to, to have a cohesive ecosystem? We need governance, we need intelligence, we need cooperation, we need education because there's a, currently a paradigm shift. So the artificially promoted narratives, the fake news is no longer the subject. If we community can demonstrate almost instantly that one piece of information is being heavily promoted or pumped, then we should question the piece of that information in order to anticipate and to, to prevent like uh, diseases or to prevent like diseases on a financial market. Um, as indicated uh, into, in, during my introduction, this information is not really new, but it's a constant evolution using technology and also increasing vectors of transmission. Nowadays, we're talking about social media. Tomorrow, we're probably talking about other means of technology. 
Nowadays, the more information is exchanged, the more information, the more chances the information is going to be transformed, either on purpose, by negligence, or really on purpose, especially in the constant growing information space. And as we try to demonstrate, AI can help in addressing the risks in financial markets manipulation, whether in the traditional finance or the crypto markets. And I really have to emphasize that AI cannot work efficiently without experienced human analysis. The human must train the machines to distinguish between truth and fake. And this is an ongoing and constantly evolutive process to preserve our ecosystem stability. And often I'm asked whether AI will replace one day human. And I must say that human and AI, they work in hand in hand. So with that, I thank you very much for listening to us. Uh, and I'll hand back to Melissa, Ernst, and Sasha. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Paul. That was really great insight. Uh, and it all looks very simple, but let me make an educated guess. It's not. <laughs> I really like uh, your approach, how you uh, provide not the decision, uh, but a transparent decision basis. Um, and uh, let me um, see if there are any questions in the Q&A. Yes, we have uh, Ernst. Uh, who do you envisage, Paul, <laughs> or Paul? Who do you envisage the typical users of the surveillance platform you presented? So uh, on one hand, the, uh, the, the exchange uh, or, for example, six uh, or some, some, some other uh, financial market uh, surveillance or monitors, they are one that can anticipate. You know that uh, usually, for example, the, the stock exchange, the SEC, is stopping uh, the trades. For example, GameStop, it stopped it uh, after the fact. So if they are, they are able to anticipate the risk of something happening with an increase of like 400% in 24 hours uh, early enough, that will prevent massive loss. On the other hand, what, uh, when we presented, and so feel free to test those applications, go on our zenpulsar.com, you'll find the anticipate, the detect, uh, and the uh, homes, both the, the pump and the homes websites are available for, for people to play with and to have fun and also to criticize us or to, to give feedback. So uh, one of the feedback we got from financial institution is that for them also in order to invest appropriately, that can give them uh, some like some minutes ahead of time, according to other investors. So I mean, as you know, I mean the the battle between uh, David and Goliath, the retail investors and the hedge funds, uh, will be constantly uh, present. Uh, so if one, let's say uh, David, is able to uh, to to fight against the hedge funds, or the other way around, they have a leading advance uh, in order to get that information to be able to um, uh, to to monitor this actively, actively, uh, and also to detect like uh, harmful narratives. Because what is important is that from a reputation perspective. Uh, for investors, let's say a bank would like to get additional investors and the, the financial institutions would like to demonstrate that uh, there are no harmful narratives against them that could hinder their, uh, their stock prices. So it can run on both sides. 